Welcome back to GP Outdoors and part two of my beacon installation on the Kubota LX2610. Today we're going to finish up the installation. I've got my beacon here. I picked it up from a company called DNR Electronics. They're right here in Ontario, Canada. They've been in business for about 50 years and they support our first responders. This model that I've used is a BCN24. A little bit wider than I expected or I wanted. I was really going to be looking more to a four or four and a half inch type diameter. This one is seven and a half inches, but it has a really low profile, which I thought was important. Don't forget to check your clearance. Whether you've got a garage or you've got a tractor shed like I do, adding a beacon to the top of the tractor might increase the height. One of the things I liked about the BCN24, super low profile. She'll fit in just fine. Let's get her out of the box. We're going to prep it up, head out to the tractor, mount her up, and then I'll show you how I'm going to wire it. Our mount turned out looking pretty nice. Kubota Gray. I want to send out a thanks to a couple of subscribers. I had a couple of great points or suggestions from the video from the other day. And one main one was adding kind of a stop here, welded onto the bar, so that when it's mounted vertically, it's going to stop it from being able to move back or forth if the tractor is vibrating too much or if the nut or the bolt come loose. So guy quickly just welded on a little one inch piece just to sit above the mounting bracket and that should help to keep it stable. Thanks again for your suggestions and advice. Came in pretty handy. I'm gonna put together and prep the light onto the mount before I head out to the tractor. A Couple of reasons. It's cold outside and there's no room at the end. The second reason is because there's a couple of really tiny screws that have to be placed into this light to secure it back to its housing. And if I drop one in the snow, there's no chance I'm gonna find it. So what I've done is I've just taken a measure of how long a wire or how much wire I need to get to where I wanna connect behind the LED work light. And we're gonna mount it and get it all prepped up. And then we're gonna head out, put it on the tractor, cut the wires and do the electrical work. I'm expecting it should be a pretty easy install. I'm gonna use bullet connectors because I've got a nice low profile and I wanna be in a position where if I ever need to remove this light or replace it with another one, I can disconnect easily without having to cut or splice wires again. I've got some quarter inch loom because the wire that's on this permanent mount beacon is in fact not an outside rated wire, which makes sense because if they're putting it on top of cruisers, on top of different vehicles, usually they're mounting it on a roof and they're drilling into in the inside of the car. Let's get her done. So here's our beacon. I think they may also go under the brand DARTA, D-A-R-T-A. And I know that they've got distribution throughout Canada and the United States, and I think also in other countries. You'll find that it's gonna come with about 30 inches of cord. You'll see when I open it, there's a little bit of room in the bottom of the housing. So what I wanna do is keep a little slack in there. I don't wanna cut off anything right tight. I'd like to make sure that if I ever need to do any adjustments or change anything that I've got a little bit of wire or a little bit of play inside. And as you saw in part one, it comes with a rubber gasket, which is going to go onto our mount and that's going to give it a help it to keep it watertight. It's a pretty simple installation, I think. These are the tiny screws I told you about. <laughs> For some applications, the wire has a slot so you can pull the wire out sideways. In our case, the way we've designed and we've done this mount, I'm gonna take the wire down through the middle hole of the mount on the beacon and right through the middle hole of the, the mount that we made yesterday. <laughs> and just remember, I'm a weekend warrior. I'm not an expert at this stuff.
You're going to need number 10 bolts to attach the base of the beacon to your mounting plate. And as you can see, the rubber gasket sits between them. I was fortunate to find nylon nuts, so I don't need a lock washer. That's great. You'll see the gasket is flush to the edge of the mounting plate on the, from the bottom of the beacon. I'll put a cable tie at the end here just to help stop it from be, ever getting pulled out. But we're in good shape here. I did buy a couple of grommets for the metal, but I don't think I need it because the loom itself fits really tight through this rubber gasket. And as you can see, she stopped right there. And we'll take it over to the vise so we can get the last screws in. <laughs> I would have dropped these in the snow for sure. All right, she's good to go. One more thing to do inside, then we'll get our coat on and head outside, finish her up. This beacon has 25 different flash patterns. <laughs> but since I'm not gonna be sending it down into the cab of the truck with any switches, I'm just hard wiring it right into that work light. What I'm gonna do, is I'm simply gonna take the green lead, which is usually used on a momentary switch to switch light patterns. And I'm just gonna play with it before I finish everything up today, make sure I like the pattern it's flashing, and then I'll leave a bullet connector on this, but keep it separated in the event I ever wanna change it again in the future. Other than that, it's pretty simple. Just your power and ground, your green, which is gonna activate different light patterns, and this white here is something that you'd hook up, I guess, if you had a switch, if you wanted to dim the light. Uh, I don't see a purpose for needing to do that, so we'll just cut her off. Still a little, a little bit of slack, but we'll wrap that one. Oh. <laughs> this brings back memories. Canadian Tire. I think I got it when I was about 18 years, maybe 20 years old. Cost me $19.99. <laughs> I've had this thing forever. Comes in handy. We get our mails. Okay. Just gonna sneak you up here for a second. There's the work light. And I got a flashlight on there. Hopefully you can see that. These work lights are connected through with this little tiny two pin connector. And it connects in right here, just outside of the roof of the cab. Not a lot of room to play with. And of course, I'd like to try to keep some kind of a drip loop, splice my wire, connect my bullets, and then plug my warning beacon into here. Oh yeah, that's on there. <laughs> oh boy, the guy does a job, he does it right. Wow, what a nice fit. I've still got lots of play on the swing on the arm of this mirror, so that's perfect. In fact, it stops it from hitting the glass now. I think that'll work just fine. I might even put a little piece of rubber on here at some point. So all I've done here, as you see, is I've taken off the electrical tape and I've just trimmed down this insulation down to right about here, because I'm gonna cut right in here approximately. I'm gonna pigtail them together and then I'm gonna pinch those bullet connectors on there. I've got them stripped back. They're actually 20 or 22 gauge. They're much tinier than the 18s, which is gonna work out well for me. So I'm just gonna 
pigtail my reds and my blacks together and get that bullet connector on each one of them and then we'll go from there. So get a little stress off these wires here. Okay, he's good. That's good, and that's good. Let's put that back where it belongs. Okay, and this should, in essence, we should be able to connect it in. Got it there. Black and my red here. So this is my red. That's my power. I was able to slide those bullets up underneath the LED in behind. I've got this one out right now because I might want to use it to set the uh, a flash pattern, unless I like the first one that comes along. But I'm going to cut this loam off here just so that this stuff can sit back in there. And I've got it in behind. So that should work out pretty good, I think. Wish I had more of a drip loop there, but that'll do it, I guess. And we're looking pretty neat. I just have to put that back up and cable tie it. And then we'll start up the tractor, see what she looks like. A little bit about my BCN24 from DNR Electronics. Seven and a half inch diameter. The unit itself is just over two inches in height. Has 25 flash patterns, 24 LEDs inside. It'll use up to about three amps of power. On average, depending on which flash pattern you take, it's about 1.6 on average. And it's good with an operating temperature of negative 40 degrees Celsius out to plus 65 Celsius. Or what is negative 40 Fahrenheit up to 150 Fahrenheit. It's got a five year warranty on the LED components and a one year warranty on the housing. Well, I want to thank you for sticking around. I hope you found it informative or helpful. And if you are looking at doing a beacon install on your own tractor, I wanted to leave you with a little bit of information and maybe advice for you to consider. Things that I've learned over the last few months researching into these beacons and light bars. If you have an open station tractor, most likely you're gonna be looking for some kind of a setup like this one, 12 volt plug-in with a magnetic mount beacon that you'd be able to put up onto your ROPS, run your wire down and into your 12 volt plug-in on the tractor. Most of the beacons that you're gonna find will come with this setup. They're going to have a magnet on the bottom and they'll have some length of wire. I think what you want to do before you go out and buy is you want to make sure you measure out from the ROPS all the way down comfortably how much wire you need because you'll find models out there that'll range with three or four feet of cord up to those with 12. And most importantly, there's a lot of junk out there on Amazon and in fact from direct retail companies across US and Canada. Make sure you do your research. Check the reviews, spend some time. Try to avoid those four or five star reviews where somebody says, you know, the light showed up on time, I opened it up, I plugged it in and it worked. You wanna sift through and find the guys that have used it for a month, three months, six months, and they're now providing a review. Because what you're gonna find is there's a lot of product out there that is not very well built. And you'll see patterns through the reviews of what the quality problems are, whether it's condensation inside, water inside, magnet is terrible and doesn't hold on, or in fact, the LED modules have burned out or stopped working within weeks to months. And don't forget the Better Business Bureau. Check the complaints on that company. You might be surprised what you find, as I was. Most of your good quality built units, the manufacturer will give you the specs, including the rating on the magnet on the bottom. Don't be fooled like I was with the B2601 a few years ago. Great marketing material. Super strong magnet, strongest magnet in the world. And as you know, it didn't hold for long and I ended up having to tie it to my ROPS. The good quality manufacturers will actually give you the rating on the magnet. It'll say it's got a 45 pound magnet or a 90 pound magnet on it. And what that means in layman's terms, or at least in my own words, is that it takes 90 pounds of force to dislodge the magnet off of the surface you've attached it to. You want a good quality magnet. Tractors vibrate a lot. You're going over a lot of bumps. You want it to stay on the ROPS. And if you have a compact tractor that's a cab model, 
you've got a number of different options available to you, but you kind of need to think through them a little bit. You can splice into one of your work lights, either your front or your rears. Similar to your front brackets, you've got a mounting bracket coming off the side of your cab that has another hole right in behind it if you haven't noticed. And of course, you've got a wire to splice into. That'll make it a little simpler of an operation because you're gonna be already switched off your dashboard for those work lights. The reason I chose the front and not the back is because anytime I run that concession road or I'm working at night, I always have my front work lights on, always, because I need to be visible. As you know, the headlights that are on the tractor when you've got a blower in front or your bucket in front are pretty much useless. You're not getting any light out of there. So you'll always have the fronts on. So it just made sense to me because I had this great opportunity on the bracket here to be able to bracket it on the front mirror mount, tie it into this front work light, and that way I'm switched right off my dashboard because I'm always gonna have those work lights on if I need the hazard light. And as you know, it works in the accessory position. You don't need to have the tractor running. Many cab models don't come with rear work light standard, but the bracket will be there and the wire, the harness will be sticking out from underneath the cab. So you've got a great place to connect. If you do have rear work lights though, I'm not sure if it's the law in Ontario, but I know that you should not be traveling the concession road or the county road or any road with big bright work lights shining back at the drivers in behind you. Again, that's why I put it on the front. If you plan on mounting it on the roof and actually taking the roof off your cab and running your wire down through your corner post, underneath the fender, and following the wires that are already routed that way underneath and up into your cab to your dashboard and your fuse panel. If you have a B2650 or an LX model tractor, you may not realize it, but here on this side of the seat, if you look in the back here, you'll notice that Kubota has left a 12 volt power supply on a mini two pin connector hanging right here in the back behind the seat. So it may be viable to bring your wires down that side post in underneath the side fender and use that as your power supply and you've also got a little bit of space here on the side fender to blow holes through to put switches should you choose to do that at the end of the day taking the roof off your cab is a pretty simple job you just have to go around the outside and where you see all these hex bolts you just have to remove them and the lid of the cab will come right off however if you do want to play with the roof of your cab remember it's a plastic cover or cap whether you're John Deere, Coyote, Kubota, any of these compact tractors, they're all plastic. So you wanna make sure that if you're going to drill holes into it, as the mechanic at my dealer told me, you need to make sure you put some kind of metal plating underneath that mount to give it some rigidity. Tractors vibrate a lot. They're also sitting out in negative 35, negative 40 degree temperatures. At some point, you may find that the holes you drill for those bolts will start to crack across the plastic. So you wanna make sure you reinforce them and of course, keep them waterproof. And hey, at the end of the day, I think that seven and a half inch profile suits this tractor a lot better than a really small four inch beacon. It's aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> Have a wonderful week with your families. Please be kind to one another. I'm Gord Potter and you've been watching GP Outdoors. Cheers.